Kia ora year 9, this video is going to go over how to solve some linear equations that are at probably about medium level for year 9 work. Um, I'm going to go quite quickly through them, they're the ones that were on the second sheet that we looked at in class today. So if you find this too fast, what you need to do is go back to the easier ones until you've got them going really well. So I'm going to start to do three per page and I'm starting with a basic two step pattern that you should all be pretty confident with. So the first one, 2x plus 1 equals 14. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. Remember, equation solving is all about keeping the equation balanced, and that's what we have to do every single time we solve an equation. So here, we're going to take 1 from both sides. Now, you don't have to show that line, but when we get to our harder questions, it's really good to go back to putting that line in. So I'm going to do it for all of these equations. So we've got 2x is equal to 13, giving me... Um, I can now divide through both sides by 2, and I get x is equal to 13 over 2. A nicer way to write that, though, is equal, x equals 6 and a half. On to the next one. 5x minus 2 equals 19. So this is, has got exactly the same structure. I add 2 to both sides to keep it in balance. That gives me 5x is equal to 21 and x is equal to 21 divided by 5. Right? So I'm dividing both sides by 5 to do that last line. Now I'd rather write that as an improper number, so that's going to be x is equal to 4 in 1 fifth. Now looking at both of these two, it is okay to write them as decimals. Okay, 6.5 is exactly the same as 6.5. So it's kind of ugly, um, but it's alright. Now Working with fractions is something that is really, really useful for higher level maths. So we want you to be confident with them. But if you do want to change this to 4.2, that's okay in this setting. However, if we get something like 4 and 1 third, we don't want to write that as an approximate 4.33, right? Because these two things are not the same thing, right? So we're not going to write that one as a decimal. So let's look at the last one, because um, this one, oh, where's it gone? This one does turn out to have uh, an answer where we just want to work with fractions. Okay, so 3x plus 7 is equal to 27. So we subtract 7 from both sides, giving me 3x is equal to 20. And now we divide both sides by 3, and we have x equals 20 over 3, which is equal to 6 and two thirds. So that's the first pattern type. That should feel really, really easy. Um, and if it doesn't, you need to hop on to Education Perfect and do some of the equation solving on there. So let's look at ones that are now slightly harder until we can see that they're really the same pattern. So 10 take away 3x equals 16. There are a couple of ways to think about this. The first is to say, well, what would happen? I've got 10 here and I've got 16 here. I'm undoing this equation until I can get back to x. So I could take 10 away from both sides and just see what happens. So we've got 10 minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 16 minus 10. Right? I've done the same thing to both sides of the equation. So let's take a look at the left-hand side. Well, now I've got 10 take away 3x take away 10. So the 10 take away 10 leaves me with nothing. So all I've got left on the left-hand side is negative 3x. Um, and that equals 6. So now we're down to an easy equation. I've got negative 3 times a number is equal to 6. I'm going to divide both sides through by negative 3. And a positive divided by a negative gives me a negative, so x is equal to negative 2. Now the other way that I could think about this that some students like better is you can think about this as 10 minus 3x Oop. is equal to 16. And this is the same as writing negative 3x plus 10 is equal to 16. Now, most year nines find that kind of crazy, but if you think about it, let's go back to what you learned when you were back in, I don't know, year one or year two. Back then, you learned that 3 take away 1 is equal to 2. Once we moved on to thinking about negative numbers, though, let's have a look at what that means on a number line. Well, I'm starting at 3 and I'm moving back 1, and I'm ending up at 2. But another way that we could link up these numbers 
is to say that if I started at negative 1 and then I went forwards 3, I'd end up at 2. So instead of thinking about the statement as 3 take away 1 giving me 2, I can think about it as negative 1 adding 3 giving me 2. So that's quite useful because when I see an equation, I'll do another one in a minute, but when I see an equation like this, 10 minus 3x is equal to 16, I can reorder it as negative 3x plus 10 is equal to 16. All right, so we can think about that 10 there as having a plus sign before it. Uh, we'll come back to that over the course of the rest of the year. So let's go back up and see which, what the other two were. Well, we had 8 minus 2x is equal to 20, and then 3 minus 4x equals 15. So, next one, 8 minus 2x equals 20. For 8 minus 2x, take away 8 is equal to 20 minus 8. That gives me negative 2x is equal to 12. I can now divide both sides through by negative 2. So I get x is equal to 12 divided by negative 2, and x is equal to 6. Right, next equation, which I have already forgotten. So let's quickly cheat, go back and have a look. 3 minus 4x equals 15. It's got the same pattern. 3 minus 4x is 15. So I'm going to start by taking 3 from both sides. 3 minus 4x, take away 3, is equal to 15, take away 3. So the 3 minus 3 gives me 0. So on the left-hand side, I've got negative 4x is equal to 12. Dividing both sides through by negative 4 gives me x equals 12 over negative 4. So x is equal to negative 3. Oops, negative 3. Remember your rules, a positive divided by a negative gives us a negative. On to some harder ones. Right, so these look bad, but actually there are two different ways to think about these ones as well. The first thing that we can do that I usually like to start with in year 9 is to expand the brackets. So let's expand the left-hand side. We'll start by writing out the thing that we're starting with. It's always a good thing to do. Now expanding the brackets, I get 10 take away 2x is equal to negative 14. But that's just like the ones we had above. So now we have 10 minus 2x minus 10 is negative 14 minus 10. That gives me negative 2x is equal to negative 24. And x is equal to negative 24 divided by negative 2. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive. So I'm back to x is equal to 12. But the other way that I could have done that was to notice this. Here I've got negative 14, and here I've got 2. Now, 2 is a factor of negative 14. So instead of expanding the brackets, it would have been just as smart to do this, to say, well, I've got 2 times all of this thing here. So I can undo the multiplication. And we get 5 take away x is equal to negative 14 divided by 2. 5 minus x is equal to negative 7. Now I'll take 5 away from both sides, and I get negative x is equal to negative 12, which means that x is just equal to 12. So two ways to do that one. The next one is 3 times 2 minus x is equal to negative 2. Well, I think that's what it's equal to. Yep. So let's do this one by expanding out. Now the reason I'm making that decision is that 3 is not a nice factor of negative 2. So we don't really gain much here by doing this one, um, by dividing through first. Um, most of the time, I usually will just expand it out. So we get 6 minus 3x is equal to negative 2. 6 minus 3x take away 6 is equal to negative 2 minus 6. So look, as usual, we do the same thing to both sides of the equation. That leaves me with negative 3x is equal to negative 8. x will equal negative 8 over negative 3, which is 8 thirds. And I'm going to write that as a nice mixed number, and that's x is equal to 2 and 2 thirds. Now, I've got a couple more equations. I just have to find where they are. Let's see. Right, 5 times 1 minus x is equal to 10. So this is one that I can do by either method. I can either expand out, or I can divide 10 by 5 to start with. Let's just change pen colour. So expanding it out, I get 5 minus 5x is equal to 10. 5 minus 5x, take away 5, 
is equal to 10 take away 5. Same thing to both sides. Negative 5x is equal to 5. x is equal to negative 1. Right? So the negative 1 is coming from 5 divided by negative 5. Now you can try that one for yourself um, by doing it the division method. This video is getting a little bit too long, so I'll let you have a go at that. I've got three more coming up. So this pattern type is where I've got x on both sides of the equation. And we've done some of these already. Remember, I want to get the x's together on one side and the numbers together on one side. So looking here where to start, I've got x here and I've got 2x here. So I'm going to start by subtracting. Well, first of all, I'll write it out nicely. 3x plus 3 is 2x minus 6. I'm now going to subtract 2x from both sides. And as with the simple two steps, you don't have to write that line out, but it's a good line to write out when you start. So the 2x take away 2x leaves me with negative 6 on this side. And over here, I have to collect up my like terms. 3x take away 2x gives me x. So I have x plus 3 is equal to negative 6. So x is equal to negative 6 minus 3. So I'm subtracting 3 from both sides. And x is equal to negative 9. The next one is similar. 7x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 24. So let's look at these x's. I've got 7 of them here and I've got 2 of them here. So it's going to be easiest to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. I'm doing it that way because I don't like working with negative numbers if I can help it. Right? Mathematicians are often quite, well, you can call it lazy or you can call it strategic about what you choose to do when. So on this side, 2x take away 2x gives me nothing. Here, 7x take away 2x leaves me with 5x plus 1 is equal to negative 24. Working through our usual two-step method here, 5x is equal to negative 25, and x is equal to negative 5. Right, I've sped these steps up a little bit, um, because if you're up to here in the video, you should be probably quite comfortable with that. And I've ticked the lines that I'd want to see and well set out working. You don't have to show me that one, it's optional. Right, what's next? 2x plus 18 is equal to 6x minus 6. Right, so here I notice I've got 2x here and I've got 6x here. I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. Right, and I get 18 is equal to 4x take away 6. Now I'm going to add 6 to both sides. and get 24 is equal to 4x. Lastly, I'll divide through by 4 on both sides, and I get 6 is equal to x. So again, working that I need to see in here is the first line, always. This line at a minimum, and then this line, and this line. But remember, it is nice to show that one as well. Let's see, how did I do? Well, I've got through all of those. Now, I've only got one and a half minutes left, and I know you guys have been longer than me. So I've got these ones still to do, um, but I'm just going to do those in a separate video. Um, and possibly not tonight. But the big idea here is that you are usually going to expand out the brackets on both sides, and then you're going to collect up your x's and your numbers. So have a go at those. I'm just going to pop the answers in, and you can see if you get them. So the answer for this one is x is equal to 3 and 3 fifths. And the answer for this one is x is equal to negative 15 over 4, which is negative 3 and 3 quarters. And the answer for this one is x is equal to negative 3 sevenths. But remember, it's never about getting the right answer. It's about the showing how we thought about it and our process to get there. Thanks for watching. I'll do some more videos in the next few days.